everybody, welcome to my channel, Miss Criticizer 2021. On a weekly basis, I come with you with the most exclusive reviews in regards to 90 Day Fiancé. Season 9, Episode 3. Now, the episode starts with Shaida making up the bed and she looks like she's a bit more in a calmer uh, she's she seems to be a bit more calm a bit more less grumpy and so she took that opportunity to apologize to narcissist Bilal she just wants to apologize how she reacted the day before and that she didn't mean it she was jet lagged she also expressed to him that she wants to make sure that he is able to provide for her because she's not working she's not entitled to work during that 90 day so that's the reason why she was also worried but she's just taking it easy and he is going on with a long essay saying yeah you know it's humble beginnings and you don't know how this life can be it's so unpredictable so we just have to cherish what we have and this man had the audacity to wear the shirt that's passive aggressive called be grateful i know it was indirectly directed to her he does the most so um shahida said she said in the confessionals that she only apologized just to keep the peace girl i know how you feel but she feels like okay he's the only one in the US with her she doesn't have anybody there so the best thing is for her to keep the peace with him that's why she apologized but she still has an issue with him he told her they'll be meeting up with his moms and so she has to get ready as they were driving into this neighborhood she saw that the houses looked quite upskill it's an upskill area with mansions and 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 really nice houses that looks like America so she said well your mother lo lives in a very fancy area so when they got to the house he said baby surprise this is actually my house and she was so happy she's like oh my god I'm happy oh my god God, your house is beautiful. This is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is how you should be living. It's how you presented yourself to me. This is what I'm talking about. This is my kind of house. This is my kind of style. This is my kind of everything. That's what I was expecting. And instead of Bilal to just keep it moving, he said, yeah. You know, he was shading her saying, that's why you should have had patience. And that's why you should have had cool. But I'm just looking at you sideways because now you all of a sudden you see this and then you're gloating over it. But I showed you my humble beginnings. And I don't know if I can trust her. And she also said behind the scenes that I don't even know if, he can tr if I can trust him because he's always so secretive. You know, you keep playing these games. I liked that he made a nice yoga room for her. I thought it was very, very thoughtful. It was nice, the gifts, everything. That's what he should have done on the first day. But this guy is such a narcissist. They also went outside. He showed her his Mercedes Benz. He's acting like he act he's acting like he owns multiple of Rolls Royce and whatever. Lamborghinis, Bentleys. He just own one Mercedes Benz. Let me not even say anything. And then he was explaining the situation with uh, the van, that the van belonged to his late father and the father has always been a role model. Okay, I understand it. And that's thoughtful. But Bilal, please, this storyline is, is not it. Yeah, you're doing the most for a storyline. It's just not it. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, moving along. So if picked up Mohammed from the airport. He arrived from Egypt. These two are so cringe. 
they're hugging on each other. Oh, kiss baby. Mwah, mwah. I love you so much. He gave himself he, he gave a quick introduction. We already know who you are. He said, "My mom is happy. My mom is happy that I found love and uh, I'm here with my woman in the USA." And I said, "Of course your mom is going to be happy because you no longer have to live in under her roof. That's why. She doesn't have to worry about you ever again." And they got home and the first thing I want to say is that if please declutter yeah there's a lot going on in your house you don't need all that stuff please declutter it's messy so she's being romantic and she's presenting him with gifts roses a ring that is in a shape of a crown and she said you are my king and he said oh baby Thank you very much. You're so romantic. I love her so much. She loves me. She takes care of me. She... Oh, that's the woman I like. She takes care of me. I want a mom to love me the way my mommy loves me. I said, this guy. Hmm. <laughs> Let me not do that. I'm not trying to make fun of, 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 of how he talks. We have different accents. I'm not perfect myself. But damn, it will take... It will take him one hour to finish one sentence. Say, oh my God, I want to be pampered. I want to be taken care of. I say, who? Translation, meaning, the definition of being taken care of. He just wants to be a sugar baby. He wants to be a sugar baby. He likes the fact that Eve is going to be like a second mom to him. She's going to take care of him, spoil him. I hope he'll be able to, I don't know, after this whole K1 is over, I'm not sure how things will work out between them. One, she has a disabled son. Now she's going to take care of two boys. This guy, I'm not sure if he can really play the role, the fatherly role. Already he's young, he's starting life. Like, how is it going to be? Will he have the patience? He, he seems to be in La La Land. And he seems to think like everything is going to be all about him. She has a child. And that's her number one priority. So how is it going to be? Gosh. And also the hypo hypocrisy. He's like, oh, I don't have a problem now living with her in her house. Even though we're not married yet. Does that not go against your, your religion? And then don't get me started on the whole bidet thing. I'm not even going to talk about it. Yeah, I know it's uh, in regards to this whole bidet. Um, it's very common in a lot of um, Islamic countries. Yeah, I, I've traveled before. I've seen it. So people should be open minded. Yeah, I, I hate when people make crazy assumptions. You know, everybody's culture is different. Not everybody uses t toilet paper. And that's okay. Even if you think about it, using toilet paper all the time, like, that does not really get you 100% clean, if we just have to be honest. They feel the organic way is to use water. So, again, each culture is different. It shouldn't, nothing should look weird just because it's not the typical standard Western culture. Anyway, moving along, that's their part. They're so boring. Thank God in this episode we don't have that boring couple, Cara and Guillermo. Hell no. No, no, no. Now, the other one which is uh, juicy is Biniam and Ari. They're back. I had to take a couple of notes because their issue is a bit of a mess. I know of them for um I know them through the first season of The Other Way. 90 Day Fiance The Other Way. I've watched it. I'm going to do another separate video in regards to their entire backstory and what I thought of them because 
their relationship was a mess. I just have to be honest. Let me give a quick backstory. We all know that um, Ari, she moved from the States to Ethiopia. She fell in love in Ethiopia. She was there on a holiday. She fell in love with Biniam. And so she decided to move there. And mind you, she was pregnant. She was pregnant during her stay there. So, of course, her parents, they were not happy about it. I think she's an only child. Um, her parents are really, really well to do. And she was in a fantasy land because, she, you know, she was in a holiday phase. A holiday phase is very different from living there. And she was so des desperate to live there. But they didn't even have many things in order. Biniam was still struggling financially. He was living with his family because, as some of you know, he's an orphan. His parents are late. So his siblings raised him. So when she finally got there, now before they had to look for a place to rent. And, oh my God, it was a mess because the rent was expensive and then... Maybe the house was not complete. The house did not have proper uh, bathroom or it didn't have a proper kitchen. Like, it, it, it was a mess. That's why I said that's a story for another day. But she always complained about everything. Especially after she had her baby. I know she went through postpartum. You could see it, the stress and all that. But it, it, it was a lot. Eventually, he proposed to her during, a fest, uh, during the uh, celebration and she said yes. But then they've been having their multiple issues. It, it, it was just a never-ending story. And the thing is, like I said, Ari, she complains about every damn thing. It's one thing to have a serious discussion with your man and said okay let's plan this a b c d because there's a culture difference there there's a difference in regards to communication in regards to everything and mind you and before i forget also in case some of you don't know but biniam has uh, another child yeah he the thing with biniam is that he also he was with an, an american woman before Ari. That was his first wife. They got married. They had a child. I'm not sure what really happened, but then um, there was a problem with his documents and it was a whole mess. And I have a feeling that he got deported. So he's not in his first child's life. He doesn't have any contact with his first, his ex-wife. So that's just like, there's nothing going on there. So now he's with Ari. And as you can see in this episode, Ari said that she had to take uh, their son back to the States because he was sick. And he needed to get surgery. So that's why they had to go back to the States. But it was only Ari and their son that went back. Bini Yam not. Bini was of course devastated that both of them left because he had like flashbacks in regards to how he no longer has contact with his first wife and his child and he thinks that maybe one day Ari will just pack up, leave and cut all contact with him. So there was it was a bit messy when she went back to the States. They fought almost every day. There was communication issues. It was, the, the drama was just too much and she felt like there were outside influences in their relationship and he wanted to concentrate on his music so times that he did not pick his call, she got angry and she assumed that he was cheating. Like I said, Ari, she, she, she nags a lot and I'm not taking the responsibility away from Biniam, yeah, but again, this is what I've been saying and it's the same thing that I said in the Memphis video and I'm even doing a, another video uh, and also Emily I'm doing another video uh, in regards to some of these ladies that got pregnant very quickly when they just met their um, their holiday fling 
they just got pregnant and then now there's they start complaining about everything they didn't plan anything and all they do is complain so this is what i mean now fast forward because oh, the story is long um she went back to ethiopia after the son got surgery they decided to stay in kenya because she felt like at least now that they're in, in kenya they're away from ethiopia away from all the outside influences and i'll get there in a second if some of you don't know who the outside influences are so after that she told him that okay let's apply for a visa to the states it's best that we travel to the states together and um, we should just make the best out of it so he agreed and he said okay let's apply for the k1 visa so because mind you they're not married yet and all those time i thought they were married because they were engaged for almost one year but i guess everything for a show everything for the tv show and maybe she just also wants to be sure so after that the visa got approved she asked him you know are you sure you want to get married to me just be honest because it's best we discuss this now we have it out of the way you know if i'm not the one if you're not the one we can still peacefully move on you know let me know are you staying with me because of the baby do you feel obligated to stay with me because of our child and i and i thought that that was a very very valid question and he said no i want to stay with you and you people are my family and based on what she said i understand because as you can see in the episode he has a discussion with his friends and his friends have similar questions his friends have similar questions because he told them that i'm going to the states my visa has been approved and they said but are you sure you really really want this because somebody will ask why are the friends interfering the friends and his family mainly his sisters because Bini Yam, I guess, has complained about Ari. Both of them have been fighting. They have a very toxic relationship. I just have to be honest. There are some things I'm not going to go into details because otherwise I don't think I'll finish this review. That's why I'm going to do a separate video uh, for, for them just as a whole. There are out, uh, and they feel like... It's not going to work and we just have to be honest there's lack of communication they always fight Ari has insecurity problems I just have to be honest about it she she panics about every damn thing and she seems to be quite naive so eventually so fast forward he had a listening party for his music video this music that has been going on for how long <laughs> this song uh, dance B uh, dance baby dancey 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 baby dancey bouncy dancey baby <laughs> i guess he shot the music video for this the, the the new music video so they saw his sisters now i'm going to get to his sisters because i wanted to save this for the last part and he had uh, so all four of them ari biniam and his sisters they had a talk and already the oldest sister, I forgot her name. I know the younger one is Wish. The oldest one, when she walked in and she saw Ari, she said, I'm not hugging you. COVID rules. Already, she, she doesn't like Ari. And, and they're not going to fake it. They have this discussion all together. And Biniam had to break the news to his sisters that he is traveling the next day to the U.S. And of course, the sisters were in shock. Why won't they be in shock? Your brother, your family, he has the audacity to tell you that he's traveling the next day. Not even a week in advance head, heads up. That was just disrespectful. I just have to be honest. And I understand why they're very angry. So as they were arguing, Ari um, 
Ari got involved and she said, listen, I did not know that he didn't tell you this in advance. I was just not aware of it. And they said, well, Ari, you know, since you're our sister-in-law, we expect you to at least tell us. And she said, no, like, it's not my place to tell you. And I agree with Ari. That was not her place to say. It is on Biniam to say that. He's a grown man. So they were going back and forth, going back and forth. And, and, and they said that, you know, we treat you like a sister. And then Ari said, you guys have never treated me like a sister. Every single time, you guys are always mean to me. You always... You, you, I, I never felt that support from you guys. It is always one issue after another that you guys have with me. And they're like, that's not true. And so then Ari had the audacity to say that, well, I'm glad I don't have to see you guys ever again. And then, foo! The wine got in Ari's face. And then Wish walked away. Wish was the one that threw the wine in her face. And she walked away. And she was talking to the other sister behind the scenes. And they're like, we're done with them. We're tired with them. Now, if you guys ask me what I think about this whole wine spilling, I'm against anybody throwing wine or spitting in anybody's face or beating somebody up. I'm against any type of physical altercation but I understand where the sisters are coming from I've watched the season like I said I've watched their first season and the thing is the sisters were always supportive of Ari but they know that Biniam had this whole issue with his first wife his first American wife that withheld the child from him they were a bit cautious with the second American woman that Biniam is with. But they still treated her with respect. They offered to take care of her baby. But they saw that there was a toxic relationship between Biniam and Ari. They always argued. She always, she's, she's always nagging. She's always controlling. She's controlling. We just have to be honest. And the thing is, the sisters, they're not going to pretend. They say it like it is. And they told her the truth. Of course, Ari feeling very entitled, you know, she felt very entitled. I'm not going to say anything when it comes to a certain uh, race of women. But she felt very entitled and she's like, ever since, she just doesn't like them. Because she feels like they're always attacking her. But they just want. They, but they were just stating out the truth, and they were worried about the relationship. Again, these his sisters, they raised him like a parents because they don't have any parents. So their, of course, their family unit is going to be very strong. It's a community, and that's the difference. Like I said, culture shock. This is the thing that I realize when people marry out of their race out of their race, out of their culture. People need to start studying other people's culture. They just expect people to know things or things to change because it's them. The way things are being done in the West is not the way things are being done in other countries, in other continents like in Africa, in Asia, in South America. Family or even in uh, the Ar Arab world. Family is very, very important. And I'll say that sometimes there's a huge involvement in family and everything. It's not like the West. In the West, usually your parents, they let you make your own decisions. They let you go. The only thing they can do is they can give you an advice. But they're like, well, you're grown up and I have to, give, I have to uh, let you live your life. And that's the situation in this case. Because every, there were cases that Ari did not want any of his family member to even um, take care of her child, help her with the child. They have their ways of maybe helping with the child, doing things. That's their culture. And she just wasn't comfortable. So her mom had to fl fly in, into Ethiopia and kind of help her. 
yeah, Ari wasn't comfortable. And okay, it's her child. She has every right to feel how she wants to feel. It is what it is. But both of them, they just cannot get along. She felt like they always attacked her and they also feel that she just disres she's disrespectful. And it doesn't help that Biniam, I feel Biniam also doesn't really have a backbone. Yeah, he's sweet and all, but I feel like he's, he's, uh, he has been a bit over pampered, if that makes sense. Because how can you complain about your woman to your family members and that's the issue this is the reason why you never talk about your relationship problem to any outsider whether it's family whether it's anybody because that's how they will look at you and your wife sideways they're not going to respect your wife anymore and so that was the issue i have a feeling he was talking behind Ari's back to his friends and his family if he did no longer want to be with Ari, he could just cut it out but he feels trapped because of the child. I feel like that's the only way he's doing it, why he's trying to stay with her. It's only because of the kid. Yeah, we just need to watch out for the next episode. Because I know that they are going to have a very, very juicy storyline. Uh, the next one, I'm going to keep it short. They're so boring. I thought that they will come with the best drama. But they're so boring. They're doing the most. Jibri and Miona, I'm going to keep it as short as two minutes, yeah? He got her cowboy boots, he's doing the most, he's saying welcome to South Dakota, the best city ever. This place, there's a lot to do, it's the city, it's big, it's fun, it's vibrant. And she said, this is not Los Angeles. And he said, but still, look, look at the buildings, look, look it's nice, don't you see how vibrant it is? She said, this is still not Los Angeles, I don't like it. He kept quiet. So they were driving to his house. And um, she said, there's nothing special about this place, please. So they went to the mom's house. And so as they were talking, she said, I still want to move to California. California is all she will eat, sleep, drink throughout the whole night. That's all she will think about. And the mom said, well, do you guys have the money for it? And Jibri said, well, we have to work towards it. And I agree. Los Angeles is not cheap. It's very expensive to live in LA. Hey, <laughs> it's really expensive. And my advice to Miona is that there's a huge competition in Los Angeles. There are over a million influencers living in LA. Everybody is competing with each other. The flats are expensive. Everything is expensive there. So um, it's not going to be that easy. And like Jibri said, they have to work and save. The mom also had to make it clear that, okay, I'm going to lay out the house chores. You guys are going to stay under my roof and I would expect you guys to clean and to cook with a schedule. I said, mom, damn, did you have to say it on the first night, on the first day that she got there? Like you could have said it the following day, but hey, it is what it is. Moving on. Emily and Kobe. Did I? Yeah, Emily and Kobe. <sighs> Emily holding, Emily is out here uh, indirectly blackmailing her man, her Medingo man, and saying that, listen, please, please, I have a date night for you and I. We just need that one night. We just need that one night. I need that one D for one last time. It's been two years. Please, please, just that one time before you see your son. But he said, but I want to see my son. She said, I understand, but... I still want that D, please. I still want that D. I say, gosh. Everything about them is just all about sex. But hey, it is what it is. Fast forward, they had a date night at the restaurant. And she's, she started asking him a thousand questions. And like I said before, now before you're getting to know the person, but you got pregnant immediately. You just got pregnant after such a short time of knowing him. And now before you're knowing him and you're asking these questions. 
Oh, what's your income now? How much money do you have now? Um, what is going on with this? And also with the upbringing, I am training our son a certain way and I'm not sure if you're comfortable with um, my parenting skills also I want to see your parenting skills I'm not sure if it will match she, like she she just started already and I'm like your guy just got there and this is the first thing you guys are talking about like can it not come afterwards <sighs> I, I, I don't have anything to say seriously and he said like I mentioned in my previous video, he said, I don't feel comfortable because if I look at the restaurant, I'm the only black man here. Like, what's going on? And she said, um, I don't really think so. I think there's one there in the corner. There's one there, one token black man there in the corner. And he said, oh, okay, it is what it is. What can I do? That's what I said. And and Kobe, Kobe, what do you expect? Yeah, you went with uh, you went with this white woman, and you don't know that in most Western countries there are parts where there's predominantly white people. You know, like the U.S. is not only about New York, Atlanta, Miami, L.A. No, but I guess, like I said, the U.S. is so good when it comes to PR. They'll only show you the best parts. Of the country they'll show the best parts they'll show the multicultural parts they'll show the 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 high towers they'll just show the best things when it comes to the PR they're good but they'll never show like those isolated areas those uh, let me not even talk about it but that's but that's it so yeah like I said he just felt uncomfortable but then eventually they had this discussion and they said okay we'll see how things go and whatever whatever so that's their their part it's nothing special yeah this video is going to be broken into the couple's parts just in case you don't really feel like watching this entire video or you want to watch one segment more than once feel free to do so and thank you once again for watching my video it's miss criticizer 2021 i love you Mwah. take care bye bye